I go by Penny since my grandmother started calling me that after her beloved cat, since she could never remember my name, so that's who I am now. After she died, I got a couple of things handed down to me from her. I couldn't bear to look at them anymore, so I sold them. One of these things was a pool table, and I just wanted it gone since it smelled like her and reminded me of her house. I'm weird, I know. I put the table on Craigslist and I got a few bites, but this one guy said he'd pay more for it than I was asking. That sounded really generous, so I gave him the address to come pick it up. He came right over and bought it, but he acted like a bit of a creep when he was there. I guess that he saw he was buying from a girl, and thought he could get an extra deal. I'm taken, I'm sorry. Anyways, he took the table away, but he didn't stay away himself. The guy came back in a few weeks and knocked on my door. He told me that he liked the pool table. I was waiting for him to make a point as to why he had come back here. But he just stood there until I said, And? He asked me if he could take me out to dinner, and I told him I was taken and my boyfriend probably wouldn't like that very much. He left after that without saying much more than, oh. A few days later, I kept seeing him drive by my house and stop in the middle of the street. He'd keep going, but it was creepy as hell. He didn't need to be doing this. One day when he drove by real slow, I guess he actually saw my boyfriend in the front yard while he was doing something and spun his tires a little bit. After that, I didn't see him again. What kind of creep do you have to be to do shit like that? I think that's the last time that I use Craigslist and pick up a creepy ass stalker. My boyfriend even asked me what all that was about, and I told him. He now has a joke that I'm trying to pick up guys on Craigslist and I'm gonna sell him off. I'm just glad the guy didn't keep doing that and left. I commonly dwell on Facebook, and I post places I go to on Instagram. I don't know why I'm doing it, I just feel the need to post photos. People seem to like them. I've been doing this for a while, and I've gained quite a few followers, so I was pretty happy with my accomplishment. At some point, I posted a photo of me in front of a little shop in my downtown area. That'll be important later. I talked to a dude on a Facebook group that I joined a few years ago, and he was cool at first. But I could see that he was probably one of those people who get really into things, and probably never let them go. He targeted me though. He friended me on Facebook, and I accepted. But what he wanted to do on my friends list was be creepy and like every photo that I posted. He did it as soon as I added him. He even commented on a few of my posts, but the only ones that he commented on was the ones from the beach a year ago when I was wearing a bikini. Now that's creepy, dude. So eventually he started in on my Instagram, but here's the thing. He'd been there for a long time. I never knew he was one of the fans that I had. He made himself known by commenting on a recent photo of mine about me posting more bikini photos and possibly even opening up an OnlyFans account. I replied to him that I'd never use my body like that for any reason. I wasn't comfortable doing stuff like that, and I never will be. He begged me, and I told him I would absolutely not, and that was final. He didn't say anything else about it for a little bit. Later on that month, I posted a few more posts, and I saw him commenting on my old Facebook photos again. This time it was just fucked up and wrong. My parents had posted a very old photo of me when I was very young at Christmas time. You can probably imagine where this is going. He commented on that photo that I was hotter then. I was shocked when I read that comment, and I quickly messaged my mom to take the photo down. I also blocked him from my Facebook and told her to as well. 
she's the only one that posts actual photos of anyone. Just for good measure, I blocked his account on Instagram as well. All was silent for a little while, until I went to the mall with my friend to take some photos there, and then walk around and look at things and play around in Spencer's. There was an older man who walked up to me and asked me if I was who I am. I told him I was, and he said that he was a huge fan of my photos on Instagram. I kind of felt a little weird about the interaction because he just had really bad vibes to him. He dropped a hint that he was the one that I'd blocked, and I went off on him about the comment that he made. He never apologized for it, or tried to clarify to me that it may not have been what I thought. All he did was smirk about it. I told him I wasn't unblocking him and he should be in jail, and that was before I walked off with my friend to go to any place else. Skipping forward a few days, he'd made several accounts and followed my Instagram. He kept commenting that I should make an OnlyFans and show him what I got. I just kept reporting his comments, which didn't seem to do anything, but I blocked every account I saw from him. I could not get him to leave me alone. One day I just said fuck it and let him comment, but gave him absolutely nothing to go on. I didn't reply or block him. Maybe this was the best thing I could have ever done. Eventually he stopped commenting, but I'm sure to this day he's still following me for whatever reason. It can't be good. He can't see my personal photos. As long as he stays far away from me, and doesn't talk to me anymore. I'll be fine, and I won't have a meltdown. As scary as it is to see your $1,000 TV you work so hard to get fall over and get destroyed, it's nothing in comparison to being stalked. This all started when my husband walked through the front door after coming home from work. The neighbor's dog was running around loose again, and he came flying into the open door. He likes it over here because he can chase the smaller animals that stay around our yard. The dog was one of those big clumsy ones, and the first thing that he did was run in front of the TV stand and knock the entire TV over. The dog didn't get hurt in the process, just felt I needed to say that. The TV hit the floor, flat on the screen, shattering it. Really, this TV was probably the most expensive thing in the house at the time. I was freaking out, yelling to get the dog out of the house. My husband managed to get him out, and back to the neighbor's house. After that little incident, we tried taking it to a repair place since the TV was out of warranty. We got it two years ago. It should have lasted us 10 plus years with no external influence. The repair guy told us it would cost less to go buy a new TV now than to fix this one, which I really don't believe. Seeing prices now in 2021, that might be true. So we decided to do the stupid thing and look for a used TV online. We tried eBay, but the prices were insane and we would have had better use of our money buying a new one. A thousand dollars was a lot to us then, and it wasn't really an option. Not for a TV, anyway. We looked to Craigslist because one of our neighbors suggested that they had really great experiences with it. My husband and I found a TV the same size as our fallen comrade, and the same brand. I messaged the guy who owned it, and told him we'd come check it out. The guy, of course, said the only time that he was available was when my husband was at work, and no other time. I wanted to get it before someone else did, so I told him I'd come out and look at it myself. I should have just let it be. When I went to go see this TV, the guy had it on an old rotten wooden table outside, plugged in with an extension cable. Why the hell wouldn't he just leave it inside? The guy was kind of annoying asking if I liked it, and if I would buy it every few minutes. I looked the TV over, and it was not in good condition. The first thing I noticed was the scratches all over the screen itself. 
There also looked to be something splashed all over the screen, like a thrown drink. I also asked the guy to turn it on, and it had multiple stuck pixels and a blemish in the top right hand corner. The way he had to turn it on turned me off to it. He had to use the buttons on the side. I asked him where the controller was, and he said it didn't have one. The guy was asking 500 for an abused TV with no remote. I told him I was going to continue looking because I wanted something in better condition. He got really salty about that and said, Well, if you weren't going to buy it, why'd you come here? And with that, I got back in my car and left. I didn't feel like arguing with the guy over the fact that I didn't want to buy his garbage TV. When I got home, I spent a few hours looking for TVs when I heard a noisy truck outside stop in the street and stall there for a while. It was loud enough to where I felt the need to get up and check it. It was the guy who owned the TV he probably treated better than other people. He'd followed me all the way back to my house. It wasn't a long drive, but still. I didn't do anything. I sat inside the house and tried to ignore him. I didn't think anything would come out of that. I heard the truck move a few more times, but he went away. When my husband came home that afternoon, he asked where our lawnmower was. I told him I had no clue. I helped him search the house and found that it was missing altogether. I told him it was probably the guy in the truck I went to go see. We went in my husband's car and we drove over to the guy's house to see if we can spot it in his yard. There was no sign of it. Later on a few days later, it was getting dark and my husband and I were eating dinner. We got a knock at the door and my husband went to go find out who it was. I could see from the kitchen that it was the same guy. I could hear him too. He made up some story about how his truck stopped running and he needed someone to come help him. I walked up behind my husband and he changed his mind about the help. I told my husband to call the police after the guy left and tell them there was a guy stalking our house. I know the guy's intentions were less than good. We also told the police that we believe he'd stolen from us. We had paperwork that proved the lawnmower was ours. They found it in his backyard later on. Long story short, we got our lawnmower back and that man went to jail for theft and stalking since the neighbors had seen him as well. He also got hit with a huge drug charge, as he had enough to be hit with intent to sell. We haven't seen the guy since then, and hopefully, he'll stay away forever. I was stalked by a man in the mall that I'd like to go to in 2019. I'm a small female at 25 years old. I was in this little store that sold makeup and stuff, looking around and really wanting to buy it, but kind of getting sick seeing the prices. A guy walked up to me with lipstick on. It didn't look right at all. He was around six foot tall, looked like he had smoker skin, and had very dirty clothing on like he had just got done playing in the dirt hole at work. He asked me if I would like to buy a kiss from him but he said it in the most manly voice that he could possibly muster up. I told him no thanks. I wasn't one for kissing random strangers in the mall. He then started begging me to pay him for a kiss, and he'd give me a discount because he said I was cute. This was really unsettling, so I told him no and almost ran out of the store. He followed me out looking for me, but by that time... I'd already gotten into another store and I was watching out for him. I spent around 20 minutes in that other store just trying to kill time, hoping that he would lose me completely. I spent 20 minutes in there because he came into the store after he found me and ran right back up to me. I told him I did not want to kiss him and to stop asking. I ran out of the store and down the mall into another store. This one was pretty big as it was one of those CD, movie, and merch stores. Again, he followed me into that one, but it took him a little longer to find me this time. At this point, he was straight up stalking me, 
and I went over to the counter of the store and had them call security. The guy disappeared before mall security could get there, but they had his face on camera. I walked back to the store that I was in for 20 minutes because I really wanted something in there. He showed right back up in that store and found me again. I ducked into another store, heading for the exit of the mall. The guy followed me all the way out to the parking lot like a damn creep. I got in my car and just left. I think he got caught because the next weekend I went there, he was gone. I met a guy at a party that I went to, and he seemed like he was into me so I decided I would try and give him a chance. He introduced himself as Sam, and he was there with his friend which I never met. I guess his friend took off or something. I got his number, and I gave him mine so we could think about going on a date later on. I went home that night kind of excited, so I guess you could say my mind was already made up. I was going on that date if he would have it. I'm a girl in my 20s, and I had never had a date before. I was a loner in high school, and I was still kind of that way, but I was starting to become less shy. I called him a few days later after I had a terrible week at work. He was going to pick me up when the sun went down, and I was perfectly okay with that. We went out for dinner, and then found a small party afterwards that we could crash. This is a college town. There's always going to be a party somewhere. There's not even parties that you have to know anyone at either. So I felt at ease with him and he kept complimenting me on how I looked all night. It did start to get a little bit old after a while, but I appreciated it nonetheless. I would never be so rude as to tell him. So after the party, he drove me back to my house, and we sat in the driveway like an 80s couple on the first night. It felt kind of awkward, and that's when he tried to kiss me. I wasn't ready for that, and probably wouldn't be for a while. I awkwardly got out of the car and just blurted out that he could come inside. No one would be home for two weeks and I had the house to myself. I instantly regretted saying that as he took me up on the offer. I hate the fact that that's what came out of my mouth. We went inside and he made himself at home as I told him to do and I sat down in the living room to talk. I was nervous having my first guy in the house. He went in for another kiss, and I blocked it this time, saying that we weren't ready for it yet. He got a little angry, but he did stop. He wanted to leave right after that, but I know why. He pulled the whole, I should get going thing. I thought it was kind of strange that he would just shift modes like this. But then again, I didn't have much experience with social interaction. I really liked him but I was almost decided that I wasn't going to see him anymore. He was just too headstrong for me and wanted to jump right into a relationship. You could say he scared me away. The next day he showed back up at my house around the same time, expecting that I was just going to go back out with him. He told me that he wasn't a one-date guy. I told him I was staying in tonight and he tried to get me to let him in the house. I wouldn't let him in, and I decided right then and there that he was probably going to be on the more annoying side and I didn't want to be with him. He left angrily that I didn't want to go with him and I wouldn't let him in, but I gave no hints that I wanted to be with him. He showed up for the next two days and finally I had to tell him that I didn't want to go out with him anymore. He wanted reasons, but I didn't want to be mean and tell him what was wrong with him. Mostly because I didn't really know him that well and I was pretty much scared to. He ended up leaving that night without the reasons, but that didn't stop him from stalking me. I came home from work one afternoon and he was sitting outside my house in his car, parked in the street. He didn't try to talk to me, but I could feel him leering at me with intent. I didn't know what he might have been capable of because I'd only known him for about a week now. He watched me walk into the house, and he stayed out there for hours and hours. I don't know why he was doing it, 
but it was extremely creepy. He did this until, I guess, he got his fill because he left and he didn't come back. He sat outside my house on random days for three weeks. He probably was wishing I'd give in and go with him. But honestly, it wasn't my solid determination not to go with him. It was the fact that I was too scared to go out there and talk to him. I convinced myself that he was probably going to turn violent if I went out there, so I didn't. So, Sam the Stalker, don't sit outside a girl's house and hope she'll come around. It's creepy and no one likes it. This took place a little over a year ago, and I think I'm finally able to close that chapter of my life. Although I still see her around town from time to time, it wasn't as easy as it is now. We'd been together for three years, and had moved into a small apartment with a cat and a puppy. The cat was mine and the puppy was hers. That's not important. When we moved in, there was a lot of lust between us. But as it grew stale over months living there together, we started doing what any couple does. We did it less, and we talked mostly about bills and dinner. We were still doing things together, but not nearly as much as we were. At year two, we were kind of growing tired of each other, and not having anywhere to get away from each other for periods of time. It was hard on both of us. When one of us needed space, there was a small bedroom with a broken door. The entire apartment was sloped and it couldn't be fixed. We didn't want to be around each other all that often, so we decided to get jobs at different times of the day, to only be able to see each other for only a little bit. She already had a day schedule for her work, and I was able to change mine for the night. At year three, things got worse. As we had planned, we weren't seeing each other very much, and would constantly have disagreements and fights when we did see each other. It was getting to be at the point where we couldn't stand each other. This is why we decided not to get married because that would have been a disaster. I still think she made a very good decision along with me not to marry. It was actually her idea and I agreed at the start. So there we were not happy with each other anymore and constantly arguing. I decided that I didn't want this anymore so I took my cat and left after telling her that this relationship was over. I wished her well, and I gave her a few hundred dollars to pay the bills that I would have for the month, so I didn't leave her sitting dry. I left back to my dad's house, who helped me find a new place. Before I could even start looking, though, she'd been up to the front door of his house, beating on it, demanding that I come out and talk to her. This was in the early hours of the morning. I'd never seen her do something like this. She wasn't civil at all, and was simultaneously blaming the breakup on me and begging for me to come back. I told her that she needed to move on, but I'd remain friends with her. She didn't want that. She wanted me to come back and work on a dead relationship. It was hard to tell her no, but I had to. She didn't get the idea, so I just told her to leave. She left, but she kept coming back and beating on the door, and begging me to come back. Every time she did it, I'd tell her no and to move on. It was the same thing each time. When I finally found a place for myself that I was able to afford, she somehow found me and started coming to that place. She'd leave notes on the door, things in the mailbox, and beat on the door at weird hours of the night. I figured she was becoming an alcoholic as well, because the last few times that she came there, she smelled like it bad. I didn't call the police because she was in a taxi at least. She started coming up to the depot I worked at, asking for me. She knew she could just walk into the office where I'd be most of the time, but she would always get someone to come and get me. This started to get on my nerves, so I told her she was banned from the depot and my house unless she wanted the police called on her. She stopped showing up and trying to talk to me, but she started giving me the creeps when she thought it was a good idea to start playing mischief. 
at my house, she broke windows, dented my garage door, and would throw things at the house and run off. I even caught her trying to sabotage my car before she took off and stayed gone for a while. This girl was out of control and she needed a tough lesson. I called her mother and I told her what she was doing to me. She's always shrank when it comes to her mother and she would clam up when she was around. Her mother was a very sweet old woman, but she was fierce. The day I called her is the day everything just stopped. I didn't hear from her again, but like I said, I did see her in public here and there. At least now she's civil enough, but it had to come to the point where she couldn't even look at me. That's what she gets for stalking. I was at the local Walmart in my town a few years ago, doing some late night rummaging since we had just gotten a 24 hour store built here. You wouldn't believe the amount of people who can't sleep at night and decide to go to Walmart to wander around because they're bored. This girl was one of those people. I walked around the store aimlessly for about 20 minutes when I walked down an aisle for movies and I saw a guy there looking at them. He was on the shorter side and had a buzz cut with a little bit of beard stubble. I paid him no mind as I started looking at the movies as well to try to find something that caught my eye. Sadly, I have no interest in most movies and TV shows, but at least I wasn't home in bed trying to go to sleep and can't. I got my fill of looking through the movies, and I walked out of the aisle to go look at something else. I noticed that the guy that had been over there looking at the movies as well and followed me all the way across the store and was now kind of hanging back a little bit. He didn't alarm me until I started to walk out of the aisle and stopped only to hear his footsteps start at the same time mine did, like a sneaker squeak when I stopped. Something else caught my eye, and that's why I stopped in the first place. The only reason this was significant is that I knew this meant he was following me now. I wasn't assuming either. He stopped because he didn't think I knew he was there, and he didn't want to walk past me, or he had gone around the other side of the aisle. He just stood there watching me from around the corner. I boldly looked over at him to make it obvious that I knew he was there, and he ducked further behind the other aisle. I ignored him and walked around the aisle, picking up speed to quickly weave around another aisle so he wouldn't know which way I went. I ran to the shoe aisle and found myself a nice quiet corner to look at things over there. A few minutes later, he walked down that aisle and stopped and walked the other way. I raised an eyebrow at that because he was just acting really strange. Just walk past me, dude. I'm not going to fart on you or anything. Now, I was under the assumption that he was just afraid of girls and stopped worrying about him altogether. You know, letting my guard down. I realized I wasn't interested in looking at shoes, so I left that place and went over to find where my interest really lay. I went to the tea aisle. My grandmother was a huge tea drinker, and she got me into it years before she passed away, and I've kept that obsession myself ever since. As soon as I got to the aisle, the guy came walking up to me. He asked me in a shaky tone if I could answer something for him. I let him have the floor, and he started with, Why are you so pretty? I asked him not to do that, and I went back to looking at tea, and was considering on buying some peppermint stuff. He stood there for a little bit, awkwardly, and all of a sudden, I guess, he unlocked some hidden away confidence to ask me out. You want to get dinner somewhere? I turned back around to him and told him that I didn't know him, so I wouldn't be considering it. You just don't walk up to a complete stranger and ask him to do something with you like that. It's weird and potentially dangerous. I picked out my tea and I walked down the aisle to leave. He yelled back at me, Don't you walk away from me! I kept walking, but when he yelled that at me, I got a small rush of adrenaline, which made me very uncomfortable. I wanted to get out of that aisle as fast as I could. 
but he ended up running after me. He grabbed me by the shoulder and spun me around. I yelled at him not to touch me and started to walk again. He jumped in front of me running his mouth about me walking away from him. It suddenly felt like I was in another place besides a brightly lit Walmart just having a stroll. I know my head was making this overly dramatic, but that's what my head just does. This guy was obviously being hostile, so I tried to be as slippery as possible. Only I didn't. I sidestepped and started running towards the front with my tea still in my hand. I knew what would happen if I reached the counters with that guy at the checkouts. Just as I had thought, the guy ran after me through the store and chased me all the way to the front. When he saw the employee up there, the guy changed his course and went fast walking out of the door. I need to exercise more, and it was really apparent then. My heart was pounding hard in my chest from just a little sprint, but I was also freaking out because some guy had just chased me through the store. I started to really feel the situation weigh in on me, and I had to sit down as the employee came walking over to ask me if I was alright. I told him that guy had chased me through the store after I told him I wasn't going out with him, and he became hostile. Once my heart rate went down, I bought my tea and the employer called over his manager to help walk me out of the store. It's a good thing he did too because the guy who chased me through the store was waiting out in the parking lot for me on a bike. I figured as much. Around here, anybody on a bike at this time of night is probably going to be a crackhead. That seems to be the norm in smaller cities. Sorry to anyone out there that likes to ride a bike at night and is not a crackhead. I know you're out there. So I was able to get home safely and not be kidnapped by a druggie who wanted to date random girls he found in Walmart. Maybe next time, I'll get my sister up to go with me. I really don't want to end up in another one of these stories if I can help it. But there's so many weirdos and creeps out there that eventually we all run into one from time to time. Just stay safe out there and be very careful. There's very good people out there but there's probably an equal amount of really bad ones as well. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If you are subscribed, hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. I just have one question for you. Who is that behind you?